welcome back to another episode of Psychonaut Sessions, your home for all things Psycho, and I'm continuing my Warlock 5 coverage with issue number 7. We have gone through all of the single issues where each Warlock had their face featured on the cover, so number 1 had all 5 of them, and then each issue after that had uh, an individual Warlock's face featured. Sometimes it, the story would feature them specifically, sometimes not quite so. And now we've got another Denis Bevois 1987 painting of the five of them together. Um, cool, fun, um, like it. It's a little more cartoony than some of the other paintings such as, you know, the fa the faces specifically, which were very realistic, but you know, when you can go more close up, the more realistic you can get. Uh, there's a lot happening here, um, a lot of great use of lighting and shadows. You got that kind of like 80s neon, all cyberpunk, all like, I mean, it, it's a great image. I love it. Um, and I think they did a pretty good job with the logo um, coloring to complement um, the rest of the painting. So I don't really have a complaint. Um, actually, love it. I'm not here to complain, so I don't know. I don't know what's what. Okay, so let's dive in. So here, Gordon Derry is kind of giving an explanation for the previous issue, which was number six, but was labeled number five. There was a printing error. They're really embarrassed about it yada 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 moving on um, so last where we left Tanith was in her special realm where there was this weird witchy demonic figure that was attacking her and it turned into some huge like Lovecraftian monster and here I guess this is supposed to be where Tanith lives really cool beautiful scene um, I, you didn't really get the good visual depiction of the temple in the previous issue, so it's good to kind of, it's good to kind of see that here. Um, yeah, uh, pretty cool. The top of this roof is being blown off by lightning, um, and like what's weird about this book is they kind of switch around with the lettering sometimes, and I don't really understand the lettering choices. And now they're doing this like medieval script font, and it's really hard to figure out what it is. Um, so yeah, so this was her temple. The roof has been blown off. This witch type figure uh, is attacking her. So this is just some kind of magical battle. Really cool. So we got a couple of different splash pages here. Um, a close up. I mean, nothing's really happening. It's just really just different images. Um, and they're all beautiful, all really well rendered. Um, great use of lighting. Denis really understands how light works, um, more so than most artists. And then um, we get some talking here. Um, Tanith is just like, she's really weak. She's being really portrayed as weak. I don't understand why I don't, and I don't understand what her ethical or morals are in terms of why she's having a hard time fighting. It doesn't really explain it fully. Um, but she's just, apparently she's holding back and she's not really, um, you know, fulfilling her full potential. Um, but I don't really like how she's just kind of just portrayed as uh, this damsel in distress. And then here, this is pretty cool. Um, the witch's blade fingernails are coming out as like Freddy blades or something really cool um, and then that night from last issue Go Gawain coming in to save the day we do get so cool um, the fingernails come out as tendrils and start building out. Now I was a little disappointed because the last issue, the witch looked like this giant demon Lovecraftian monster thing. Um, 
but she wasn't really that. She's still cool looking. I love how the way she looks. Um, but anyway, Tanith is supposed to be this badass warlock, and she keeps having people come save her. Um, so it's just annoying. So this knight's saving her. He's getting all ripped up. Man, that's horrific. Having this stuff like go down your throat and all these tendrils coming out of this witch. And Tana decides, I mean, she's got all this magic, and she decides, well, I'll just poke my fingers into her. <laughs> um, oh no, he's really, Denis really trying to explore movement. It's so hard to do things in a realistic style, but then you have, like, the movement and action that's required in either animation or sequential art. Really difficult, but he's really learning the pace. So not really sure what's happening in this image but apparently the um, witch is kind of semi taken out Tanith starts drawing upon her power now shoots it into the witch that's a pretty cool image it looks like something out of Fern Gully um, and the witch is now almost dragon-esque uh, attacking and the knight comes up says eat this cuts its head off and that's that. That's it. That's all we get of that story. Um, so she gets all like, oh, I owe you everything. And he's like, I would follow you anywhere. And this, they start kissing and she passes out again and faints or whatever. This is just, this is a really beautiful image. It looks so real. It's actually, if you look, it's very simple. Um, there's really not much to it in terms of the paint strokes that were used to create the image. But it's just gorgeous. It's a incredible panel. And that's uh, that's where I think Denis is really starting to find his, his uh, stride here is finding instead of just trying to make everything look so realistically rendered just finding the simplest way to communicate what you need to communicate and going with that um they mentioned in the letter earlier that he was having a hard time putting out a full comic which is why they had those extra supplements those extra comic supplements in the back of the book up until now but now they're going to you know denise found his stride and he's going to do um, a full on comic each time so it's not just like half a comic and then we get back to the real world or the whatever realm that the grid converges Dumador meets with Tanith and Zania they're getting all like Ooh, I could go for a man like you Dumador I'm like what? what's happening? They're going to the restaurant. They're on their way. Um, the the Nixa zone, the place where everybody can be at peace. And then they stab Dumador. And he's down for the count. Again, you can see how Denis is wearing less and less. So this is almost like a thumbnail background. Um, which is fine, you know. He, he has other strings he can lend out so he doesn't have to get so detailed in the backgrounds like he was earlier. Some weird bag lady, homeless lady, finds Dumador screaming. And then all all Dumador's knights on their motorcycles take off to go after Zania and Tanith. We get some cool car chase scenes here. My complaint, or not my complaint, my observation in the earlier issues is Denis wasn't really great on... Um, motion and movement and he's really starting to get that down he's really starting to lean into just full on action they jump on the car they're getting thrown off the car Dumador is in like the side cycle thing um, this knight throws <clears throat> an axe thing goes through Zania um, and they tear up the tires and the car goes tumbling and I mean, obviously, you can, you probably have already known that it's actually, you know, the robot dude and his minions. Dang, what's his name? I can't remember right now. 
Um, but yeah, just really well done. Um, he's really like understanding um, how to tell a story sequentially, how to give us a full on action scene. And then again, the lighting. Um, Tanith is like really one of my like least favorite characters so far because of the way she's done but in terms of the of visually leaning into Denise's strengths Tanith is amazing to look at throughout the series because of the way he renders the lighting around her um in such a dark comic she's this that kind of focus of light so yeah they are basically part of that robot dudes um entourage of terminator type beings this is so 80s you get yourself a lamborghini in there um this looks very much like a trapper keeper type thing they blow up the evidence they take off the police come uh, they take a statement from the bag lady um, and they find a piece of the um robot mechanism and they don't understand but they do find tanith's license plate which says tanith which is weird but that is the robot i guess it's like the robots gave her that license plate it's like why would you have that license plate you're hiding out from anyway and the bag lady saw it all happen and says it was tanith so like tanith is getting framed uh, tanith and zania are getting framed for dumador's murder and then i should probably should have done a warning here but Tanith is just getting it on with Gawain after everything else going on and um, just doing it with this random dude and gets a phone call from Savage Star from another dimension saying why did you do this um, to do Midor? like what the hell I didn't know that you were capable and she's like what the hell are you talking about and he tries to explain it and then she just drops the phone and just gets it back on again so he's like basically telling her oh my god this thing is happening and um she's just like whatever and gets it back on this is kind of an ominous looking depiction of Gawain so there might be some other ulterior motive really cool imagery but um yeah then it's continuing again so here's my assessment so far with warlock 5 God, i love these ads oh just loving it my assessment so far of warlock 5 i like it i love the concept i'm not thrilled with gordon Derry's um writing capability um he just completely skipped over a whole big bulk of story during like the big apex of it that like the final conflict of it and the after on in issue three as we discussed and then it seems like he's just kind of jumping from one thing to the next with each issue and there's no real there's no real like tie or anything it's just it's almost like he has no real plan he has an idea and he's just writing issue to issue let's see how long i can just carry this forward and it's just kind of getting exhausting especially when the characters don't really seem to be making decisions that make sense tanith is one of the ones that's been highlighted from the beginning tanith and savage star as like the good guys the main good guys in the very beginning they were kind of pinpointed in that way i've not understood the decisions any of them make um i don't understand why savage star just thought he could just take Dumador and show him his own planet and change Dumador's mind but then Savistar goes around just killing left and right um, even though he's like supposed to be this emissary of peace Dumador just changes his mind and it's like oh you're my friends now I love you um, and Tanith is just all over the place she's whiny and oh I can't do this I can't do that and then she's just like boning this guy for no reason and when chaos is ensuing she's cared about the grid and everything else that's going on in the grid up to this point and then now she's like no i'm just gonna get it on i don't care it just makes no sense um 
the only character that ever makes sense is of what they're doing is Zania, and that's because she's just a punker. Um, that's just all about anarchy and chaos. And then this guy is just trying to... He's just constantly one-upping everybody all the time. I don't know. Um, there's quite a few more issues in this series. I have them. I don't know that I'm going to continue covering this on this channel. Um, I think I'm just going to get into the Warlock, the latest uh, rendition of Warlock 5 from Outland Entertainment, written by Colin Bunn. I think I'm just going to dive right into that. Um, because I'm just, I'm kind of tired of getting through this. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's really given me much. I'm pretty certain that Colin Bunn's interpretation of Warlock 5 will be pretty pretty fun and entertaining but anyway it was again it's a they're fine issues to read they're okay i just don't know if i want to keep going over them again on the channel um so i'll read the series of course but um unless there's a whole following of you all out there they're like no daniel do the rest do the rest then i will absolutely but in the meantime, thank you so much for joining. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Please sign up to my Patreon and support my artistic works. You can also support me by buying my comics and my, sh my books in my shop. Everybody out there, take care, stay safe, and keep it psycho, folks. Mm -hmm.